Before I begin with my commentary, I want to quickly explain the term desirability politics and what it means specifically pertaining to this video. Quote, desirability politics creates a hierarchy of existence and determines who deserves love, care, benefits, and basic human rights based on seemingly individualistic preferences that are rooted in bigotry and biases. Desirability politics shape the lives of numerous people who are not conventionally attractive or desirable. Social capital is measured by desirability and this shallow system is what constitutes desirability politics. Unquote. With this idea, although beauty is considered to be subjective, society essentially determines who is attractive and worthy of love and who is not, which leads me to the low visual weight and high visual weight conversation taking place on TikTok. For those who aren't familiar, the idea of low visual weight and high visual weight is used to determine, quote, your face shape and structure, unquote. In terms of high visual weight, this quote refers to a person who has more prominent features. On TikTok, high visual weight is described as people with small faces and large features, unquote. As for low visual weight, it is defined as pertaining, quote, to those with features that are less pronounced, unquote. Both low visual weight and high visual weight, quote, is influenced by three key factors, the distinctiveness of your bone structure, the prominence of your facial features, and the overall volume of these features, unquote. Although the purpose of both terms are used to describe certain facial structures, to me these ideas could unintentionally create insecurities. Just the idea of high and low generally has a negative connotation attached to it. Generally speaking, when talking about a person person's appearance, specifically a person who is considered conventionally attractive, you rarely describe them as being low level, for lack of better words, in terms of look or appearance. Instead, you would describe them as being the complete opposite. Again, I'm sure the conversation surrounding low visual weight and high visual weight isn't meant to be taken in a negative way, however, it can be taken negatively when certain facial structures and facial features are uplifted in comparison to others. An example that was mentioned in this Refinery29 article is actress Angelina Jolie, who is considered to have high visual weight. As many are familiar, Angelina Jolie's physical appearance has always been considered the ideal look within society. That being said, within society and in media, whiteness is regularly uplifted and considered to be the beauty standard. In order to be seen as being beautiful or attractive, you essentially have to have or resemble having features that are Eurocentric and or want to obtain Western beauty ideals. In terms of Eurocentrism, it is defined as, quote, a worldview that is centered on Western civilization or a biased view that favors it over non-Western civilizations, unquote. In relation to this, Western beauty ideals refers to, quote, a particular type of beauty, one that centers a type of white femininity that's only accessible to a select few, unquote. Women like Angelina Jolie and Margot Robbie, for example, are then considered to be the beauty standard for all women based on their Eurocentric features. With this, BIPOC women within society are then expected to strive for or want to have Eurocentric features as this is considered to be the ideal form of beauty. It is quite apparent in society that racialized women must have Eurocentric features or features that are similar in order to be considered beautiful. The general mainstream belief is that whiteness is beautiful, desirable, and or ideal, whereas facial features that don't resemble Eurocentrism and or whiteness are deemed or considered to be the opposite. Just think about Tiana Taylor and Ari Lennox, for example. Although I consider both women to be very beautiful, mainstream media would say otherwise. Social media has openly made fun of both women's physical appearance. In 2020, a user on Twitter tweeted, quote, Ari Lennox and Tiana Taylor's ability to have dangerously high appeal while simultaneously looking like rot wheelers will always amaze me, unquote. To defend herself, Ari Lennox replied saying, quote, people hate blackness so bad, unquote. Tiana Taylor also responded saying, quote, no lies detected, unquote. This alone just shows you the amount of disrespect black women experience when they are not considered to be desirable and or ideal in terms of physical appearance by the general public and mainstream media. This essentially allows people, specifically men, to disrespect women, primarily BIPOC women, they don't find attractive or in this case conventionally attractive, which I have a hard time with as conventional attraction usually relates to whiteness and or Eurocentrism. Similar to this, Megan Thee Stallion has also been subjected to disrespect specifically pertaining to her physical appearance. As many are familiar, Megan is a pretty tall woman, which a lot of men and even women make fun of. Because of Megan's height, she is often considered to be more masculine within media and popular culture. Mentioned in this Medium article, colorism also plays a huge 
part in this construction of Megan the Stallion. Even though Zendaya and Taylor Swift, for example, are quote, of similar heights, unquote, to Megan, both women, quote, have never been treated the same, unquote. And again, this largely has to do with who is considered beautiful or attractive within Western society. Because both Zendaya and Taylor Swift have this, quote, proximity to whiteness, unquote, their femininity is rarely questioned, whereas Megan is generally subjected to forms of disrespect in terms of her physical appearance. In Megan the Stallion's song, Not Nice, which was released on her Traumazine album in 2022, she briefly mentions the disrespect she regularly experiences within popular culture and in media, specifically pertaining to her physical appearance. Megan says, quote, I guess my skin not light enough, my dialect not white enough, or maybe I'm just not shaped the way to make these give up, unquote. With this, it is very clear that Megan is very mindful of the disrespectful and hateful comments she gets about her looks and physical appearance. Generally, in order for black women to be considered ideal or attractive in terms of looks is if we have Eurocentric features. During her time as a model in 1976, supermodel Iman was considered to look like, quote, a white woman dipped in chocolate, unquote, which did not sit well with her. Iman said, quote, to me, I took offense to that. I don't look like a white woman. I look Somali, unquote. With this comment, it essentially creates the belief that in order for black women to be considered beautiful or attractive is if we look mixed with something or are not entirely black. Again, in order for you to be beautiful as a black or BIPOC woman, you must resemble whiteness. As I've mentioned, although beauty is considered to be subjective, essentially within society, you must look a certain way in order to be seen as or considered beautiful. So generally speaking, if you resemble your eccentric features, for the most part, you are automatically seen as being attractive, desirable, and or ideal in terms of physical appearance. This leads me to another example. Although both Renee Rapp and Rachel McAdams are white and therefore generally considered the beauty standard, there was considerable discourse surrounding Renee Rapp's portrayal of Regina George in the newest 2024 Mean Girls film. People online were quote criticizing the casting of Rapp claiming she's not pretty or thin enough to portray George. Some internet critics deem it unrealistic for a mid-sized woman to be as popular and unchallenged in her meanness as Regina George. Unquote. This is a clear example of how, as I've mentioned, within society, you must look a certain way in order to be seen as being attractive or beautiful. If we go back to the term desirability politics and what it means regarding appearance, again, this system essentially determines who is considered worthy of love and who is not. In this instance, society made it clear that Renee deserved to be criticized in terms of her physical appearance simply due to her not looking a certain way. As I end, I want to stress the importance of being confident and happy with who you are, regardless of what people may think. I know that this is easier said than done, but learning to love yourself and learning to love who you are, especially in a world that thrives and profits off of insecurity, is very, very important and beneficial to your well-being.